What a nightmare. I'm going to give you a bunch of reasons why you should never buy this shed. Hey guys, it is September 3rd and I just wanted to come back here after doing another video for you and talk to you about this craftsman shed that we bought at Lowe's. And it's not really anyone's fault at Lowe's, but this shed here needs to be um, fully disclosed to people. You know, it's like buyer beware before you buy something like this. The price had gone up on it so much um, last year with the pandemic, but we went ahead and we bought it anyway because we wanted to create this cute little cottage garden area that is in, in her transition to fall right now. So everything looks very overgrown, but I, I deflect. Um, anyway, this shed, I'm going to show you a couple things that happened with it and tell you why I think you should never buy it. So we ended up paying a few hundred bucks for this cute little shed that I thought, all right, it's made of resin. It's got a cute little gable up there. It's got nice wide doors. It's four by seven. We had to build a little pad for it because we knew that the surface had to be level in order to get this thing to go up properly. So I'm going to start to talk to you about why you see this and why you see this. So anyway, it was a nightmare to put it together because it wants to warp immediately as soon as it comes out of the box. But because we keep um, our little lawnmower back here, um, it was really convenient that we have a place to keep tools to cut the aviary and just to have stuff to work on this little garden. So you can see inside here that I'm able to keep um, a Craftsman lawnmower, a manual Sun Joe, and then you just have all this empty vacant space in here. Now, these wood framing pieces here were not here. They did not come with this shed, and I'm going to talk to you about why they're here. So, anyway, what a story of anxiety. After we got this thing assembled and it was in its little place, everything looked so cute. Um, it was so convenient to have the little lawnmower back here, and it's just a transition from here to here in order for me to maintain this area, and I'm not lugging lawnmowers all over the place. Well, long story short, I come out one day, um, it was raining, and I could hear the wind while I was down downstairs in the basement doing some things, and I came up, and the whole entire little shed lifted up in the air and smashed into the fence, and the whole back of it was broken. The doors collapsed, the roof was disconnected, the sides were all folded in. It was an absolute nightmare. Now, I think we spent like 500 bucks for this thing, what a nightmare. Anyway, we, we ended up taking it apart, screwing it back together, and I'm going to show you some of the connection points that are problems. So this roof has to connect with these screws up here. And then there's these little tabs that go along that have to fit into grooves. And it's the same way at the floor where it connects to this little floor that you could call it. And then the door pins go up into little holes to keep the doors shut. And the roof system is fairly strong and it's got little skylights. So this little shed just has so many features, but where it goes wrong is if you do not have this thing square, okay, you have to have it square. You can't get it square unless your floor is level. If none of that happens, it will never be stable. And all it's going to take is one good gust of wind and your, your thing is gone. So after we got it assembled, we've had it for a little over a year now. John got it reassembled again. And it served its purpose of holding on to the lawnmower. But then we realized where it took its hit, it really didn't survive very well. So this entire side frame here, it just split and we realized that it was opening up. And then we realized it was moving in the wind. So we went ahead and we got some marine rope and we fished it through, through the top up here and we're holding it down with, um, with some ground anchors. So these ground anchors, they just auger down uh, with a twist. And what we did to make it easy, some people don't understand how to get them into the ground. We just put a piece of PVC in there. We lined it up, cleared the rocks and started using the PVC as like a handle through the hole. And then it, the anchors just go in and they really do auger down well. So then we took the marine rope 
and we fasten the whole entire thing down flat to the uh, to the base. So this is all just pavers that we put on top of sand and rock, and we got everything nice and leveled. And you can see um, the dings that it took when it hit the fence. We had to replace part of the fence post. Thank God it didn't damage my house or go through a window. But it was really like the Wizard of Oz. I mean, the whole thing just lifted up and it went backwards. It was just, it was totally scary. So in order to get, and this still isn't closed properly. It's never gonna close properly. But today as John works on it some more, um, we're gonna try to close that gap. And I, I don't really care if this thing gets a little bit wet inside, but we had to try to pull that corner together with some brackets that we were able to bend into place and try to fasten the, those corners together. And then John built some framing here that we're actually going to uh, put in with some lag screws um, through the side of the shed and into the wood so that we have it framed out and sturdy. But we're also going to be able to use this opportunity to create a shelf um, on top, a shallow shelf, just something where I can put, you know, tools or containers or whatever. Now this gets really hot because of the resin and our microclimate. So you really can't put anything in here that's gonna suffer from heat too much. Um, but it does stay fairly dry. So, you know, that's good news. So today John will be fastening uh, this wood frame to the structure. And when you do that, you guys, you have to get outdoor exterior grade bolts um, or lag bolts. You wanna use a, a metal washer and a rubber washer to keep these holes waterproof. So um, we screwed them in through the sides and then came over and fastened them with another washer and a nut. So hopefully that will keep the corners together. Um, but we can see over here that it's deteriorating on this side as well. And this is really frustrating because I've grown to, to um, really rely on this little shed, but... Uh, the plastic is meant to last for all eternity. I mean, if we if we just threw this thing away, it would last in the landfill forever. So we said, you know, why not take a chance, try to frame it out, try to salvage it if we can, and something to maintain, you know, our, our little lawnmower in. But overall, how do I rate this experience with this Craftsman Shed that is four by seven we bought at Lowe's? I would give it a negative 10. Um, it's just, the plastic is good, but it warps in the sun. It's not easy to put together. You have to have a level place. It can damage your property if it takes off in the wind. It's more aggravation than it's worth. And in our research, we realized that almost everyone that bought one of these and installed it had to come back and reinforce it to some extent. So if you bite the bullet and buy it anyway, remember you have to buy ground anchors and you wanna buy something to reinforce this. So if it's just, you can't just let it sit out in the middle of your yard, it will blow away. So anyway, that's uh, some progress on repair of the shed. My personal opinion on whether or not you should buy it. And again, my opinion is no, don't buy it. Instead, save up the money and get yourself a real wood structured shed. So um, stay tuned for some more video on how we're going to go ahead and bolt the wood to the side of the shed.